Good morning, Frederica. I hope you can hear me. Um, I know that your audio is still not set up here, uh, but if you're able to type into the chat or the questions pane, um, just to let me know that you can hear me, um, then we can go ahead and start. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with our Web Forms webinar. Um, thank you for uh, attending, Frederica. Um, I hope that we might be able to have some time for questions afterwards, um, and hopefully we'll, we'll be able to have a chance um, with our uh, audio working properly. Um, we'll dive right into the web forms uh, demo. I see that you sent me an email here. Um, okay. All right, so again, welcome to the web forms uh, demo webinar. Um, we're hopefully going to have some time for questions at the end, uh, but let's go ahead and dive right into our web forms. So I actually have a sample web form um, that I've created previously, and this is on a uh, purple and gold theme, so it will look a tiny bit different than uh, your um, League's uh, website being uh, that LWV Belmont is using the red and blue theme. So let's first start with the basic structure of a web form. Um, the main two parts um, are the top portion here, which is the all this text. This is basically the page portion where you would access uh, to make changes through a new draft. And the other portion starts from this progress bar below, and this is the web form portion underneath. Um, so let's jump into what the page portion looks like, and this will probably look familiar to you being that you have probably already created pages um, before. So it has the title and the body text uh, portion like a basic page does and many other types of content. Underneath the body text box, there are additional body text box for either embed code or additional formatted text. Um, and you'll see the description of where uh, they'll display or uh, what type should be um, included in here. So body with embed code, as this sample, sample text says, this body text box displays under the entirety of the page. Makes sense being that it's right underneath. Content below the form will display under all of the form components, all of the web form, and it will be at the very bottom of the page, not just uh, above the web form. You can relate it to committees, just like any other piece of content, and uh, you can limit the access to uh, this form being public or for members only. And then we have our uh, 
you know, promotion options here that are the same for all pieces of content. Um, we won't get into the nitty gritty of these four forms, uh, just for time's sake. I'm gonna leave this um, as is. I'm not gonna save any changes, just being that I didn't make any changes here, so I won't save anything. I'm gonna scroll back to the top and go back to view our published version of this web form. Okay, so that's the, the top part, the first part. The second part are the form components, as I said, that make the web form. So to access those form components, you're gonna hit the web form tab and that will automatically open this form components tab. If I click here, it is the same uh, page that opens. So let's uh, just take one of these, for example, all of these listed here um, are an example of each type of form component type that we offer for web forms. Um, one of the most common ones that you'll use with a web form will be a text field. So we can start there. Um, I'm sorry, let's actually take a look at what they look like um, before I take you into the back end. So this is the most common uh, one that you'll most likely use, the most common form component type, because you're asking for information from your uh, users. Text area is the next one up, and as you can see, you can the differences are uh, self-explanatory. Uh, this is a bigger paragraph like box, and um, it is, you know, customizable uh, by size. Um, number is another one that works very similarly to text field, um, but this will only take in uh, digits. Email again is another similar one, but this will be this field will look for um, the the basics of an email address, so it will look for the um, at symbol and the dot org or dot com, whatever it may be. Uh, ending. So those are some of the most common ones that you'll be using, at least as far as like the simple uh, form component types. The next one that we see leagues using quite often on Milo is the select options type. Um, this is one that's commonly used for choose your membership type. Are you renewing? Are you an individual or a household member? Um, and so this one comes in handy quite a lot. Um, another one that you could use like for surveys is grid. This is a little bit more advanced, um, but it is, you know, all of these form components are intuitive and you can just jump right in and um, create a, a test form to see how, how they work for you. Um, and then the rest here, the file allows for uh, your users to, to upload a file if you were you know, collecting reports. Um, a field set, this is actually two text fields placed into what is the field set form component type. Um, so this uh, helps you to ca categorize your web form. Um, and then lastly here, we have the uh, time and I believe date as well, I didn't go over. So those are uh, quite simple and self-explanatory there. So because now that we've seen um, what each of them look like, why don't we just jump into creating a new web form so that you can see what it looks like from the very start. Um, to begin with a new form, I am going to jump back to the home page because I need to access my administer leak site menu. To create a web form, you can actually do it more than one way. Um, the simplest way is to 
start with adding a form or that's the most straightforward way. You can also start with a page because the web form settings will be available um, you know, after the creation of the page. But we'll start with the most straightforward way, add form. We'll call this demo form. And I just want to plug in some filler text here. So I'm just gonna grab some Lorem Ipsum. There we go, okay. Just so that we have a little uh, formatting going on in our page. Okay, so this is gonna show at the top of the page, um, at the very top, right under the title. Um, again, these uh, boxes are for additional text to be displayed right under this body text. And this text will display at the very bottom of your web form. Um, so we'll keep these simple here. And I'm going to save this as a draft. Oh, I'm sorry. The league to which this content belongs is um, something that you as a local league webmaster won't have to worry about being that you belong to only one league. Um, but I, as the LWVC demo um, member, belong to two leagues there. So that's the reason why I have to um, answer that one. Okay, so we've saved a draft of our demo form. So it looks just like a regular page, uh, but we see that the web form tab is now available. And these tabs here, obviously, because our draft is uh, activated and we don't have a published version, I only have the view draft and edit draft buttons available to me as far as the page portion goes. Okay, so let's jump into the web form tab. So this is what your form components uh, screen will look like without um, from the very start. So the, the portions that are required to add in a new form component are the label. So let's go with text field, the, the first one that we had um, talked about. So the label has to be specified. And you can't have duplicate labels. It's one thing to note. Uh, you'll have to specify the type. Text field is chosen by default. You can require this uh, form component to be answered. And then you must hit add to then um, either add more settings or specifications or just leave it as is. Um, so these are filled in by default. The default value, um, it's if you want to have a pre-filled uh, field, um, that is for a little bit more advanced users uh, because you would have to use the tokens that are available to you. Um, the description here uh, would display underneath the field itself. So you can add, add your name just so that we can make use of that description field. We'll make this one required. So you can choose to make it required from the following screen as well. Um, to make something unique, you don't want to uh, have the same answer submitted twice. So a, a second submission could not have the same answer for this text field. You can specify the length as far as the minimums and maximums. 
the display, uh, because our, um, our theme does not allow for much customization, the width won't be customized. Um, and the, so that's just one, one thing to um, note there. So the width won't change um, if, you, if you specify there. The placeholder will show up as a grayed out um, piece of text. Sample, we'll try that. Uh, this is prefixes that are helpful for, um, you know, uh, money or anything like that. There are postfixes as well. The label display by default is to display above the field how this label, this text is displayed above the field. If it were in line, this text would be next to the field to the left. And with none, the label would not be there and it would just be the text field only. Uh, you can force the description to be above the field under the label. And if you disable this, the field would not be editable, but it would still view uh, just as a grayed out field. Um, and the private allows only um, access to administrator members, all the webmasters of your league. So let's go ahead and save this. This is, um, you know, CSS, if you don't know much about it, there's no point in getting into it. Like myself, I don't know much about it. so. I, I don't mess with that much. So let me go ahead and save that component. And it takes us back to the form components list. And because I made it required afterwards, uh, that is now checked. So let's go back to our draft. So you can see what that first uh, label or that first form component looks like. Very simply put, it is just the text field. And we see that the prefix text is there, sample. Add your name was the description. And there goes our little asterisk for the required um, form component. So as soon as I start typing that, go that grayed out um, preview text goes away. So let's go back to web form and add a couple more. Um, be, being that text area is very similar to text field, the settings that you have to set once you hit add are for text area are going to be very similar to text field. Um, let's set up select options, being that that is probably one that you're going to use quite often and it's a really nice one and fun one actually to use. So let's say choose one. And we'll hit add because I've I specified the label, I chose the type. Okay, so again we see very similar fields. I'm jumping right down to description. Please choose one of the whoops following. Okay. So this is options. This is the meat of this form component. This is where you're required to fill in. Um, so let's go ahead and just add one as an example. First thing that came to mind. Okay, so on the left here, so you'll see you see that there are kind of two parts to this divided by um, this line here. The portion to the left is the safe key portion, and that's something that um, is going to be like machine readable. Uh, you want that to be um, connected with an underscore, no spaces. Um, similar at least in the setup to this. If it's one word then you don't have to worry about underscores just like that. And then the portion to the right is going to be what shows to the public. So you want that to look pretty whatever whatever it is that you put there. So because I started with option underscore number I'm just going to follow in that same order. And 
then let's just give a third one. Okay. Moving on, you can allow for multiple options um, to be chosen. They don't have to only choose one. If you allow for another, um, it would add a text field under those three options, under the three static options. And this is a, the default. You can change this text, type in another beverage. Okay. And um, one awesome thing about the select options form component is that you can load pre-built options lists. Um, days of the week, countries, and US states are ones that just by clicking this option, you would not have to specify any options up here. So if it, if it were that you were choosing select options for the option of US states, for example, um, you'd add the select options form component you have the option of uh, providing a description, but if not, uh, you could just jump right down to choosing US states and then you can save. Because um, the, the options are plugged right in. Again, you can require it afterwards. A uh, list box comes in handy for a long list of options, um, especially for US states. If you're gonna have all 50 as, op as an option, um, you want them to be presented in this type of uh, way rather than in um, box checkbox form like this, because this will be the default display where you choose between um, options or this is the list box uh, display. I'm going to leave it as the default so that we can see what it uh, looks like. You can randomize the options so that every time they will display in different order. And again, these are the same options as before. So we're going to go ahead and save this component as we have it now. Awesome. We're back to the form components page jump back to view draft and let's take a look. Okay, so I didn't require this one. Um, there is um, a known bug that we are working to combat right now when it comes to the select options form component. You'll, you can see that it's showing, the label is showing up twice um, and we can go over a workaround and it will actually show you another uh, type of form component. So yeah, I know this is not something that we want to have all the time because it might be a bit confusing uh, to visitors or users who think that there's another question missing there. So to remedy this, first I have to turn off the label display for this select option. So let's jump to that before I make the new uh, form component type that I'll add there. So let's go to edit select options and we'll go all the way back down to where the display options are. So remember by default, the label display is above. I'm turning that off to none. That's all I have to do to turn off the label display. And I'm saving that component. Let's go back to see what I've done. Okay, so that's gone. But now I wanna make sure that there's at least one question, not, not the duplication of the question to be displayed. Uh, so the before I uh, name the label, I'm just gonna name it the same. Um, or a similar one. The type for this workaround is markup, the form component type for this. Um, so let's go ahead and 
name this choose one with a different symbol because like we like I said earlier uh, you cannot you cannot have the same label name for multiple form components okay let's go ahead and add and so here with the value this is the portion that's going to display so being that I named this name the label choose one I'm copying that and I'm just pasting that right in and here you can have the same as before because this is um, this is no longer the label this is just the text that you're plugging into the markup form component type um, you can format this however you'd like and where it will display by default it will display on the form only um, it's recommended to uh, display it on both the form and viewed submission in case you're going back to look at the results um, after somebody has submitted and you're only seeing the choice of coffee without knowing what the question is just for example so let's save that component and now I need to rearrange it and move it by the grabby handles that are available to be above the select options because if I leave it underneath it's going to display under the select options so let's save that and go ahead and view draft so that is one of our workarounds it is um, it's sadly extra steps but it's at least it's not um, it's not too involved and it teaches you about the markup um, uh, form component um, that you might not use otherwise. Um, we have a few more minutes. I don't think that we will have time for extra questions aside from web form, so I'm just going to keep plugging through other form component types. Okay, so we've talked about the text field form component type, and that is also very similar to the text area. Um, we've talked about markup uh, and how it's a workaround to the select options form component type so let's get into field set um, this might be one that you will use especially like for gathering data um, surveys so again I specified the label I specified the type and clicked add again this is an optional description field and so this is where it does change a little bit here the display uh, options are different than what we've already seen you can make this field collapsible because as we saw here I'm going to jump back to that sample form. As you saw in the sample field set form, or I'm sorry, the, the sample form with the field set form component, you can add multiple form components under this field set to be in this container. So if you have, you know, five, six form components in here, it might be nice to have that be collapsible. And if you make it collapsible, it'd be collapsed by default. Uh, hide label, it would turn the label off completely. Um, and then the description above the field, because by default, this description will display under the field set options. So, these options are similar to what we've already seen. They're just uh, chosen or your the way you enable them are a bit different. So let's save that as is. And because I don't have 
any form components underneath it yet. Let's see what it looks like. It's going to look a little funny. Just has the description so far. So let's jump back to web forms and without even having to create a new form component, thanks to these grabby handles, I can just move it over to where I want it to be. And I'm going to use the first text field that I created. I'm grabbing this and I'm moving this all the way underneath sample field set. But before I save my changes, I need to move that to the right so that it's indented and underneath the sample field set. Because if I leave it like that, let's test that out. If I leave it just in line with the rest of them, it is on its own under the field set. Let's go back up. Let's indent that and save. Let's go back to view our draft. And so now, and I'm sorry, the description will show right under the label. Um, so now we see that the text field here is encapsulated in the field set. And it is collapsible. jump back to web form and build a couple other form components here. Let's go with another oops, easy one that you will most likely use quite often, email. Again, this one is very similar to text field um, and Let's check it out. So we have the label as email address. We've chosen a type. I've optionally chosen to require it. And let's add it. User email as default here is the first uh, you know, option that's different than what we've already seen. If a user is logged into their Milo account, it's going to pull in that user's email directly into uh, the default value. You'll be able to see this happen after I add this form component because I'm logged in. Here's an optional description. You can allow for multiple email addresses to be entered. They'll just have to be separated by a comma with no spaces. Um, if, if you specify this, that's something that you'd like to add into the description. I've already required this. You can make this a unique one. Um, this might be a good one to make unique so that you're not doubling up on email addresses. The, the placeholder. You can help somebody understand better what you're looking for. And again, these have to do with the label and the description. So I'm going to go ahead and save my email form component. Let's jump over to view our draft. So this is the email that is associated with the account that I'm using right now. And that is why it is automatically plugged in. Um, if I take that out, we see our placeholder. Um, but because the system recognized me, it pulled my email from the system itself. So now that we have a, a couple of form components here, um, let's jump to see the form settings uh, because this has to do with deal with all of the um, major settings of your form itself. So the confirmation message, the default confirmation message is thank you for your submission. Um, you will be or click below to be taken back to the form and then there's a link to the form. It's very simple, very straightforward. Um, and it gets the job done, at least in, 
and letting people know that they have successfully submitted this form. You can change that confirmation message here. Other leaks have put in PayPal buttons um, for their membership forms um, or have changed up the instructions to say, you have one last step, please fill out your, um, your check and, and forward this to this address. Um, you know, how, whatever other additional instructions you may need to provide to them, it's best added here. Uh, the redirection location confirmation page is set by default. And even if you change the confirmation message up here, it will still display on this confirmation page. You can create another, you know, Milo page for them to end on, or um, maybe a PayPal page if you have an outside merchant um, where they need to finish their transaction. Things like that would go would be here for the custom URL. No redirect would just re reload the current form page. Um, I I feel like this one is probably not best practices because the user may feel that they didn't submit it properly, or um, maybe something happened with their browser, and you might end up with multiple submissions from individuals. Uh, let's leave that as confirmation page. And let's actually um, change this up with some lorem ipsum so that we can see our changes at work. Okay. Did a little formatting there just really quickly. Um, Okay, back down to where we left off. Total submissions limit. It, it, it makes sense that our default here is just unlimited, um, but unless you know your limitations for this, you can limit here. The field is to enter a number, and here you can choose the frequency. Okay. Per user submission limit, Limit each user to specify the number and again, uh, specify the frequency. You can close this form. Um, it's recommended to do that instead of deleting a form. Um, say that it's a registration form for an event that you have yearly. Uh, it's best to just close it so that you save yourself the hassle of recreation. And then submission access here. Uh, by default, the roles that can submit are general, public, and league member. Um, being that a local league webmaster is also technically a league member, they are able to submit as well. Um, so the, if you already have league member chosen, local league webmaster is not necessarily needed um, as well. Let's open these up here because some of these have by default some settings already enabled. The progress bar is something that we saw um, from the start and that is by default chosen. You can take that off. Um, let's jump back to the sample form. That's what this is here, the progress bar. Let's take it off so that we can see what it looks like without. Show page number as number of completed. Um, comes in handy when you have a multi-form page. Show percent com completed. Show page labels from page break components. This has to do with uh, page breaks, which um, are enabled down here. Include confirmation page in progress bar. Let us disable, oh, let me open this up. Oh, I'm sorry, it's in that advanced settings. Okay. I'm sorry, let's open that back up. Okay. So back to showing the page labels from page break components, being that 
I have, or if you have a one-page form, um, I, I didn't enable any page break form components, and that is a different type of form component type. Um, let's jump back to the sample form. Um, in this form, I have my page break down here, and so that's why the button uh, says next page. Let's jump to that. So with this demo form, if I add a page break, then the label will display. If I disable this and I add a page break, there will be no label and it will just be one continuous page. So let's disable those. And I'm going to disable a confirmation page, being that this is that confirmation page there. And here's that page break label. Okay, save our configuration. So that is the form settings tab, um, which controls a lot of the major settings for your form. Let's go back to view draft because some of these changes, oh, I accidentally closed the web form. Um, but before I go back in, being that this is a closed web form, the web form fields will not display at all. I erron erroneously said that they would be grayed out, but they just will be removed completely and the message up here will show. So let's go back in and open that form again, which I accidentally set to. So I'm back in form settings and status of this form is set back to open. And I'm just saving because I just needed to make that one Um, sorry, this is my administrator screen. Okay, I had to set these back to unlimited because I, again, accidentally set them to limit. We're saving our configuration and we're back to view the draft. Okay, so our progress bar is gone. I no longer have page breaks and no confirmation page. So I just have a straight submit button. Um, so let's submit one of these so that we can see what the confirmation page looks like. So I chose my beverage, added my name and my email address. Let's submit my results. Perfect. So we have our the title that I added, some body text, and the notice box. And here goes that link, go back to form. So going back to the web form tab, um, another big portion of the web forms that you will get great use of is the email notifications. Um, you can set these forms up to email any of your leadership or any of your team, um, but you can also set them up to send a copy back to the uh, that person joining or that person who's donating. So to set it up for a direct email, Let's just set it up with my own. You would type in the email address that you want to um, send to. And here you can specify multiple email addresses as well, just by separating with a comma. And you'd add. Enable sending is chosen by default. You can disable sending from here so that you wouldn't have to delete the this entry um, of email to addresses. The email header details can be uh, left as is or changed. The default subject is form submission from and then the title of the form, demo form. 
the email from address is our Milo support address. My, uh, it's support at lw.org. And again, you can choose a different uh, component, form component to be any one of these. But I'll leave these as default. And this is the default um, email template. This is um, HTML. So anything, any added text that you would put in, you'd want to have your HTML tags um, on, on each piece of text that you add in. I've seen other leaks here um, add in additional instructions not only adding the additional instructions on the confirmation page, but adding the additional instructions in the email that that new member or that donor will receive. So let's save our email settings. And we won't see these settings go into effect until somebody submits the form and then I receive an email after that submission. Um, once you start receiving submissions. The results tab is where you can see them all together. Because I'm the only one that has submitted so far, we just have that one. And you can view. This is, um, you know, the same answers that I, I just gave. Um, but it's very nice to see it all in one spot. You can resend the emails on this submission. Um, being that I didn't receive because I didn't set up the emails in the first place or before the submission. So let's go back to that web form. And I'm sorry, I'm jumping back to the web forms tab so that I can access the emails tab. Now I want to set up the um, email to for the email address form component. It's going to be very similar to how we set up the email for this one. But instead of typing in the email address, I am choosing the component value of email address and hitting add. Again, I've already chosen the component of email address, so nothing to type in here. Make sure that that is uh, this is chosen because if you click the field here to type, it will move. And then every other setting here is the same as before. Um, these email, email settings or email notification settings um, that you set up are very simple. They're all very similar though. The things that you would have to specify it really it's just the email address because the subject and the email from address are already chosen by default you just have the option of changing them um, but these come in handy to let your team know of a new member or a new donation right at the moment that it's being made so we have a few more minutes. Um, we have uh, some time to go over some form components. I'm, I'm hesitating a bit because conditionals is the only uh, tab that we haven't gone over yet. But this one is a bit, um, it's a bit hard to get into without much time. I would recommend um, Frederica, I think that you you probably have enough enough knowledge to move forward to create even just a, a test form, um, one that you don't have to publicize and you can leave it just like how, create one like I did and leave it in draft mode so that nobody, um, as far as the, the public, would be able to see this form, just your webmaster team, those that um, would have an administrator member login. But 
I would say I, I recommend you creating one like this so that you can um, add all the form component types that you want and then you can gain more confidence that way um, with just the creation of them. And from there, play around with the conditionals. Um, let's just add one here because then you'll see that there are di very different options just depending on um, how you want to set up your form. Um, I'll leave it at that and you know we can always pick up where we have left off as well as far as the conditionals go and um, set up another time to to talk about that because I think that would probably be another good chunk of time but it would be very helpful um, if you wanted to create an advanced form but because our join forms are and our donation forms typically in league are usually quite simple um, you know it might not be something that, that you need just yet but uh, We'll, we'll leave that there. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to gather my thoughts here. So we've gone over the form component types. We've gone over the structure of a web form. We've talked about the form settings uh, that control the web form and the email settings that control the email notifications. I don't know if any of you have any specific questions that you want to throw into the chat or the questions pane. We have like five to seven minutes left and I, I'd like to just squeeze out everything from this session if, if we can. If not, um, I feel like we've gotten gotten through a lot. Okay, so with that, I'm not seeing any hands raised or anything in the questions or chat pane. So, um, I want to thank you both for attending. Um, I hope that you know you were able to to get some good uh, instruction out of this. And if any of you have questions that came from this, um, please don't hesitate to email me or um, give me a call, and we can we can get through those together. Uh, with that, I will go ahead and end our webinar. And thanks again.